tonight we're going to talk about list comprehensions. So as a Pythonista, this is um, something that has started, did not start in Python, but has been picked up by a lot of other languages who liked how Python implemented it. Who's doing ECMAScript here and has been doing list comprehensions in ECMAScript? This, this would actually drive me to actually like JavaScript because they've t picked up this feature alone. I'm really excited about that. So what is a list comprehension? A, a list comprehension is basically a, a way of converting one list or any kind of iterator. Everybody know what an iterator is? It's a thing that acts like a list, so when you ask for the next thing, it gives you the next thing, and gives you the next thing, and gives you the next thing. So anything that can act like an iterator or a list, it can take one list and turn it into another list. How do you normally take one list and turn it into another list in your language? Yep, for loops, right? So you normally would be using for loops. So this is kind of the common pattern for taking a list of things, like some existing list, and into a shiny new list over here. So you basically would loop through. Uh, a lot of times you may have some kind of conditional because you're trying to filter out things from the list or somehow modify that list as you are appending to it. And then you may actually perform some operation on each item in the list as you're appending it to some new list. So that's, you know, why would you turn one list into another? It's because usually you're modifying the data as you are appending it to this brand new list. Python gives us an awesome, easy way to make this way more readable. Who's, who's read the Zen of Python? Oh, I should see every hand in the room go up. If you guys have not read the Zen of Python, tonight your homework is you're going to go home, you're going to, oh, well, you can even do it tonight. Open up your Python interpreter and you're going to type import this and hit return. That is the Zen of Python. You're going to print that out, frame it, put it on your wall in your bathroom, and then every night when you're brushing your teeth, you're going to read that. Okay? Because this is one of, the Zen, one of the tenets of the Zen of Python is that readability counts. So one of, the, one of the things I really love about Python is the fact that it's so easy to read and so easy to pick up someone else's code. It's almost it's not impossible, but it's harder to write bad-looking Python, nearly mostly because of the nature of, of the language itself. Uh, we, they were designed around this fact that readability counts. So how can we take that existing for loop, and we want to copy and paste our way to a, 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 um, a list comprehension? We're going to take the for loop we just saw on the previous screen, or previous two screens, and we're going to turn that into a list comprehension. So a list comprehension, by the time we're done, is going to be a nice little one-liner, preferably less than 79 characters, that fits in our terminal. But there are ways of actually uh, putting breaks in there nice and pretty. So what I've done here is I've taken and highlighted in the section of code up above the part you're going to copy, and then we're going to put it into our list comprehension down below. So in this case, we're going to take the initial definition of our empty shiny new list and copy it into the very bottom here for our shiny new list comprehension. And don't hesitate to ask questions along the way. Or I guess if you guys want to wait till the end, you can get up over to the microphone. That's fine, too. The next step is we want to take the operation we're doing to every value inside of our list, and we're going to put it into our square brackets. So every list comprehension is going to have square brackets like that. And every list comprehension is going to have our, our operation that we're doing to the item in the list. And then the next step is going to be to take that for line, and we copy it in minus the colon right here. So n times 2 for n in some existing list. It's already looking pretty familiar. It's still nice and readable, which I really like. And now we can add in those conditions. So if you have a condition inside of your for loop, they can be written in the same order, for loop, if condition, right inside of our list comprehension. The only difference is where we're normally appending, you know, kind of in the order of operation right here, that part comes first in our, inside of our list comprehensions. So that, that is actually our, our fully completed list comp comprehension. We're taking every item of n inside of that some existing list. We're going to multiply it by 2 and optionally run some function that gives back a true or false conditional uh, for that condition at the very end. Now, if you didn't need the condition, if you, weren't, if you weren't doing any kind of condition against it, you can actually just leave the condition part off. That's actually just optional. This is probably the more simple form where you're doing you know, some operation on a variable as you're looping through some existing list. Now, I've not done much of this, but it is possible to nest your list comprehensions. So if you actually want to build, say, a tuple, I'm sorry, a tuple, of x and y, you just include the lists 
the, uh, the for statements in the same order you would include them in your normal for loop. So that's, that's the, you know, you just include them just the same way you would include them in your for loops. So for x and 1, 2, 3, for x and 1, 2, 3, and then for y and 3, 1, 4, and then you can actually include your conditions as well. Those can be tacked on in the same order they would normally be inside your for loop. So it's really easy to go from any for loop like this into a nice clean one-liner by copying and pasting out each of the for sections and then putting in your operation. So here we're just doing nested.append xy. That's our same value that's up here at the very beginning of our list comprehension is that tuple x comma y. And it's really important to keep that order correct or else you get, you'll get different results, obviously. Now, there are other kinds of comprehensions. So list comprehensions aren't the only thing you can do. The list comprehensions just happen to have the square brackets and produce a data type of a list when it's done. We can actually do sets comprehensions and dictionary comprehensions. Uh, I've used dictionary comprehensions. Uh, if you guys are familiar with sets, they are super powerful for basically gathering together collections of unique things. So if you wanted to do like a unique word count over a whole book, you could throw them all in a set, and a set would give you back the unique occurrences of every word in that book, for example. If you wanted to do that, uh, you can do it with a set comprehension. So in this case, we're going to use a set comprehension and you just notice the only difference here, instead of square brackets, we've got curly braces. Kind of looks like a dictionary, but it's not because there's no colon involved here, right? There's no key value. There's just keys. Just like in a dictionary in Python, the keys of a dictionary have to be unique. In a set, the, va like the items inside that set also have to be unique, which is what gives it that power to give you back unique sets of items. What do you guys expect to have happen here? We're doing x for x in abracadabra if x not in ABC. Almost. Remember what I said about unique items? RD. Exactly. Because sets are able to filter out and give us just a, a, the a unique instances of a, a character in that list or that, that sequence, which is a string. So that's set comprehensions. Very similar to list comprehensions, except you get unique items out. Now, with dictionary comprehensions, similar, but this time we have the colon. So we've got the curly braces, just like a set comprehension. Now we're going to be able to do key and value. So if we actually wanted to be able to have a key, which is the uh, number from our tuple, and then have the value squared, the, the, the value in that dictionary be the, the value from the tuple squared, we can do this. The only difference here is we've got x colon x squared for x and 2 for 6. And in the end, we get a dictionary. So the only difference, we've got a colon here with keys and values. So it gives us back a plain old you know, Python dictionary structure, but we've been able to eliminate a for loop. And you can use conditionals. You can do nesting. All the things you can do with the list comprehension, you can do inside the set comprehensions and inside the dictionary comprehensions. It's just a nice, clean, much more readable way of being able to do that. If you guys have further uh, questions about this stuff, the Python list comprehension documentation is actually really good. I've linked to it from this slide. And then uh, if you guys have ever been to a Django conference, Trey Hunter is a huge on talking to anybody he can talk to about list comprehensions. He has a really good blog post that visually goes over kind of what I showed during this talk. Uh, a lot of what I showed was actually inspired based on his, his blog post there. This slide deck is already up on GitHub. So if you guys want to get these slides, they are on the IndyPy GitHub org in IndyPy presentations. You'll find it kind of by the name as a subfolder inside that presentation. If you guys got any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Yes, Mac. Yes. Correct. Yeah, you would have uh, been gotten all the characters that wouldn't have matched A, B, and C in that case. Oh, so the question was, in the abracadabra example, if I change this from being a set comprehension to a list comprehension, an R, D, and R. Correct. Yeah, the new set note, well, new. <laughs> I'm showing my age there. The set notation is to use curly braces without the colons for basically a set of keys. It's kind of like the dictionaries without the values. Yes. Oh, yeah. 
That's a whole, that's a whole uh, topic I was going to do for another PPJ. The question was about pointing out generator expressions. That yeah, you, we have a lot of power in Python to use a similar me type of a mechanism for generating or yielding uh, objects kind of lazily uh, back to you. So if you're doing asynchronous programming or you don't want to like put a whole file into memory, uh, you can use generator expressions to really do some cool stuff here. Yes, uh, Rob. Softball question. Oh, wait, uh, it gets <laughs> muted. Uh, would a list comprehension run faster or slower than the equivalent for loop? <laughs> Is it, I think it's fast. Yeah, that's right. It's faster. <laughs> so, yeah, the question about the uh, list comprehension is actually, I don't know why. We looked it up one day, didn't we? Less memory allocation. Less memory allocation? Uh, it's more efficient under the cover. So, list comprehension is actually more efficient than writing out the more verbose for loop. Yeah. <laughs> The question is about the next slide. I hope it's the next slide. So can okay. we switch to the next slide? Yeah, the dictionary uh, yeah. expression. So, so the for x in now what follows looks like a tuple, right? It is. But a tuple, um, I'm sorry, a tuple. <laughs> a tuple is an iterator. Lists are iterators, tuples are iterators, dictionaries can be iterators, file like things in Python can be iterators. So you could actually have a file here and iterate over every line of the file. Uh, anything that acts like an iterator, or is an iterator technically, can be used in these expressions. And, and one of them, either a tuple or a list, is, is it auto-sorts itself. So each, the tuple, tuple, and the list, some habits are really hard to break, are all ordered. A list has a specific order. Okay. Now, who knows the difference between a tuple and a list? They both look really similar, except for one's got square brackets and one's got curlies. Or not curlies, but parentheses. Correct. Tuples are immutable. So if you want ah. to reassign this tuple to something else, okay. you can't just change a number in the middle. You have to reassign the whole variable. Where with a list, you can actually reassign a specific item in the index of that list. That's the big difference there. But which of the two are auto-ordered in the sense that you may append things in a certain sequence, but what gets stored is auto-ordered, either alphabetical order. That's a or set. Well, the sets have no specific set. order. Well, take that back. In Python 3, 6, that behavior is changed for dictionaries, that the dictionaries are ordered. So that's, that's been something, a big difference between Python 2 to Python 3, and more specifically Python 3, 6, is that dictionaries are now ordered. Okay, good. That, that was a good refresher for me. Thank yes, you. yes, it is. No, it's not sorted. It's just stored in the order you put the items into the dictionary. No, in 3.6 it is. I don't know. <laughs> but if you're wise and you're actually using the collections module, there is an ordered dict mod, uh, module in there that you can actually use inside collections. That's probably the better way to do it, because you're sure you're going to have backward and forward compatibility with two and three. <laughs>